Hey, hi, welcome to this part where we are looking at Amazon Athena 15 plus thumb rules. Now, these thumb rules are very important to understand the Athena concept. We get these thumb rules or questions linked to these thumb rules in Excel. Please subscribe to my channel for more such informative content. Now, an important question is what is Athena first? So, suppose you have S3 bucket. So, this bucket has a lot of files or objects and you need to fire SQL queries. So usually we build ETL jobs, it will read these files and write to this database. That is a usual uh, normal tradition, but that is no longer required. You have Athena uh, there to help you out. So that's our rule number one, where you, whenever you see questions, where they are talking about interactive queries, hitting S3 buckets and write, firing SQL queries for analysis of the data, then you should use Athena. They might, in the Solution Architect Associate exam, they might tell you um, whether they will give you options if Athena solution works best or would you put it in your database and that works best. One thing to remember is you might get questions in your uh, Cloud Practitioner exam where they ask about whether Athena is serverless or not. It is serverless. There are no servers to, to be provisioned here. There is no infrastructure to be set up or managed and you can start analyzing your data immediately. See, the reason I have just put a text Athena because there is no server, nothing. I cannot, I will not use a VM to put Athena. Athena is a serverless architecture. So since it is serverless, you only pay as you go and whatever you use, like suppose a database is there. If you are not even using it, it is still running. You will have to pay for it. Athena is like whenever you use it, fires equals on S3, you use it. Otherwise, the service is shut down. It helps you to analyze your data stored on S3. That is the prime sole purpose. You might have large amount of files and those files may be CSV, JSON, Avro or any columnar data formats like Apache, Parquet or Apache Warsi. This is uh, crucial. Columnar data formats helps you, you know, read more data and store in a small amount of space. So what we are saying here is Athena has no limits on the format. It can read all sort of formats and help you with the firing the queries to analyze the data. How it does so? Because it uses Presto. Please see this keyword Presto. Presto is a technology which is behind Athena to fire SQL queries on these file formats. So Presto is used in the background. And one thing to note is it uses a data catalog because it tries to store information about the schemas for the tables, like whatever files you have and whatever number of fields you have on the files, it will try to put those metadata information on the data catalog. Metadata is stored. Now, uh, Athena has this feature, but if you are using Glue, see Glue is another serverless architecture, but this is the ETL, Extraction Transformation Load, ETL tool, which is, provided by AWS. Now, if you have you, if you in your project are using glue, then you should not use Athena data catalog. You should use the glue catalog. And that is what our next thumb rule talks about. If you have the region supporting glue, use the glue catalog instead of Athena catalogs. But why we should use uh, glue catalogs? Why? See, it is a unified metadata repository. You can use it for Athena storing that metadata as well as you can use it for your ETL jobs that you are creating. Maybe you have an Oracle table or SAP metadata. Extra. It is one unified place, one unified repository where you will have all the metadata. Second thing is automatic schema and partition recognition. So the Glue catalog is very smart to understand the partitions. The advantage of partitions is if suppose this is the file on S3 and you create partitions, so the data in this file will be stored in multiple partitions. These three, these are three partitions of the same file. So the data is split based on any logic, maybe a date logic or any anything, a date partition. And we have created three different partitions. And partitions improve the performance. So what we are telling here is it is antaryami. It can identify or recognize the partition itself and it is easy to build the pipelines 
and uh, pipelines is what when we create glue when we use glue AWS glue we create pipelines using glue we do not create pipelines using Athena we create pipelines using glue now glue has this unique feature when we say automatic schema and partition recognition it has some sort of AI enabled crawling we call it glue crawler we can define crawlers these crawlers will automatically uh, try to understand the schema and identify the partitions now in the exam you will have to differentiate between athena emr and redshift you will get questions and you will be posed with these options and you will need to be very clear on your concepts when to use athena when to use emr and when to use redshift see to start with redshift is just a database for me okay and it is used to store data warehouse so you see here in this diagram redshift can hold operational data like from the operational databases s3 data lake if you have these files it can store in redshift and uh, different other marketplaces so on and then your reporting applications they plug here so these are your reporting application and you can connect it to redshift to create reports out of it this is just a data warehouse but a modern data warehouse similar to snowflake or azure synapse it is of that stature and this is columnar in nature what it means is it is designed to give you similar performance like big data emr or hadoop clusters okay so that talks about redshift and conceptually if people say i want a database and which would be very smart to handle large operations large data sets and i should be still able to create reports out of it redshift is your answer but if you are talking about large scale data processing then emr is your answer okay and if you are talking about you know avoiding getting the data sets into a data space and avoiding etls and those kind of stuff where uh, the key would be cheap operation i want cheap solution if you want cheap solution use athena which can plug to s3 directly and fire sql queries now one thing to note is athena in the background uses apache hive dtls to define the tables okay this is important to fire the queries it uses presto i showed this presto but to create dtls of the tables it uses hive so that's the thumb rule and this thumb rule is talking about the different type of formats like i already explained there are different formats supported csv tsv json text files and columnar formats like orc pakwe and so on okay so one thing to note is in the exam you will get questions where you will have to uh, give a proper design to solve performance issues or to reduce the cost for either ways these are the two solutions compressing the files if you compress the files that means the number of scans will be less because the billing for athena happens on the number of or the amount of data that the scanning is done by athena and partitioning these two will help you with reducing the costs and increasing the performance both are very important from the exam standpoint primarily aws solution architect associate now athena can support all these data types in integer double car var car and so on so like i told use partitions which will allow you to reduce the scans the amount of data that the scans will be done on if you reduce that you will be saving cost and your performance will be fast because you don't have to scan the whole million records if you know that uh, the partition only a thousand records needs to be scanned then that will be faster and always remember athena integrates with quicksight now what happens is if you are using quicksight athena is in between using athena it integrates very well with quicksight quicksight is your reporting application it's so it's a bi tool similar to tableau or cognos or click and etc now in order to improve performance this is very important from the exam standpoint you should use compressing partitioning and converting your data to columnar formats columnar formats is like parquet files orc files you should consider that these three tips will help you reduce the cost and improve the performance now using athena is it safe is it is the data encrypted so that is what we are talking in this thumb rule yes it is encrypted and you can use server side encryption with kms okay and you should you can also use client side encryption there are all methods of encryption possible but the thumb rule says is athena can integrate with kms and it can provide you encryption decryption features that is important now the pricing of athena it is based on per query and the charges are based on the number of data or the amount of data that is scanned by the query okay so that's why we say the less the data 
the less will be the cost and in order to make the data less you compress your data you partition your data okay or you convert it to a columnar storage format so that you pay less you scan less you pay less so that's the mantra scan less pay less scan less pay less and how do i scan less a question for you how do i scan less i will compress the data i will use partitions i will use columnar file formats and if you do that you will be saving 30 to 90 percent on your query costs very important please note that there are no charges for failed or cancelled queries please subscribe to my channel for more such informative content this channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications this brings us to the end of this video please stay tuned for more such exciting topics see you in the next part